Centenarian Rules of Life. The Caucasus are one of the largest mountain ranges on Earth. The highest peak of Russia and Europe, Mount Elbrus, is located here. This 5,000 meter high mountain is the most iconic landmark of the Little North Caucasus Republic of Kabardino Balkaria. Ever since 2012, scientists have been searching for the keys to its longevity in its capital, Nalchik. For instance, the oldest officially acknowledged citizen of the USSR, Sharali Muslimov, died in 1973 at the age of 168. Sharali Muslimov lives in a village of Barzavu, high up in the mountains. He is 150 years old. He is a contemporary of Pushkin and Lermontov. Unfortunately, this record cannot be verified. That is why gerontologists often doubt the reliability of the age records. It is hard to believe that a human being can reach that age. Speaking specifically about the Balkar people, there is a term in their dialect, Juzilik, for a person who celebrates their 100-year anniversary. There is also a term to donate a 150-year birthday, Keshtek. Therefore, we can conclude that back in time, people used to live up to 150, or rather, they might have lived that long. From a scientific point of view, it is hard for me to believe that a human being can live past 120 years old. Those bars on the monitor are the associated DNA fragments that is associated with a serious disease like cancer, heart attack, or Alzheimer's disease. Those DNA fragments of the longest living people are normally dormant until extreme old age. Scientists are researching the prerequisites for such genetic peculiarities in the genes of 50 centenarians in the Caucasus. One of the first to contribute to the database of the gerontologist was a person who our expert, Morat Jabermiezov, has known since he was a child. They live in the same village. I am Mutalif, the son of Sultan Mirzoyev. I am 101 years old. Mutalif Sultanievich Mirzoyev is a true mountain dweller. He spent the first 20 years of his life high up in the mountains. His family village, Upper Chegum, is located at an altitude of 2,000 meters above sea level. Since I was 10 years old, I have helped my father look after the cattle. Then I worked in a state farm. I was a shepherd. I would climb mountains that I would not wish on anyone else to ever climb. Mutalif moved to the plains in the 1930s. It turned out that he had a talent for singing national songs. But his singing career was interrupted by the war. Mutalif Mirzoyev was sent to a cavalry regiment. We defended Crimea with a sword. Germans besieged us with tanks in 1941. 500 cavalry soldiers were taken captive. Mirzoyev stayed in the Austrian prisoner of war camp until it was liberated in 1945. He tried to escape three times. Every attempt failed. He was caught, severely beaten, and sent back to the galleys again. The orders given in German have been imprinted in the memory of this kabardino balkarian centenarian.
Видно было, сделаем вот так. Вот вам здесь, и все равно вам здесь. Today they are preparing a feast on the summer terrace. The 1st of July is a special day for the Mirzoya family. Today, Mutalif turns 101 years old. The first year after the big 100th anniversary is celebrated in a modest way. Only close friends and relatives are invited to the house of his daughter in the Yanikoi village. Modern Caucasian cuisine is steeped in tradition. Its foundation is traditional dishes which have remained the same for centuries. The signature dish of any housewife is the pastries with mincemeat called kichini. Those are rounded pies with potatoes, cheese, fresh herbs or meat. It is the favorite dish of the Kabardians and Balkars. Other than that, the national cuisines of these people are vastly different. Some people are more engaged in livestock, so their main foods are dairy products or meat. Others are more engaged in planting, so they grow different plants, and they eat different food. The elders of the region, the Aksakwals, have followed different diets from childhood. It is hard to find a common source of longevity in their gastronomic history. But similarly to the way it was 100 years ago, all foods are organic and locally produced. A rare exception is a cake bought in a shop for a special occasion. Hello. On the same day, 100 kilometers away from the village of Yanikoi, in the foothills of Elbrus, another centenarian is celebrating his birthday. The passport of the head of the Uzdena family states his birthday is July 1st, 1909. My name is Iskach Uzdenov. I am 105 years old. Iskak Uzdena was born and still lives in the village of Upper Baksan, in the vicinity of Mount Elbrus. In contrast to most of his neighbors, he learned to read and write. He went to elementary school at the local mosque. His parents were very religious. Two of my elder brothers died within a week. I was taken out of school and appointed as a record keeper. Then I was made a bookkeeper. I even worked as a secretary in the local council. In 1944, all of us were taken as prisoners and sent to Kazakhstan. We lived there for a long time. We barely survived. But they wouldn't give us any work here. I could only find work as a shepherd. Iskak Uzdenov worked as a shepherd up the mountains until he was 70. Religious commandments and traditional values determined his lifestyle. I never smoked a cigarette in my entire life. It's very bad for you. Cigarettes destroy one's health. Vodka destroys life. Once, someone added some vodka to my glass of wine. And after that, I stopped drinking alcohol. Thanks to Allah, he supports me. This wise man lived happily with his wife, who was the same age as him for 70 years. She died in 2013. Shortly before she died, a local newspaper published an article dedicated to this unique long-living couple entitled 
200 years between two. I love life. I'd live another hundred years if I had a chance to. You cannot get tired of living. Someone with a soul has a desire to live at any age. Despite hardships, old age, and the loss of the woman he loved, Iskak Uzdenov is far from being miserable. According to local gerontologists, a love of life is inherent to the Caucasian centenarians. I am Ala Inarokova. I'm 65 years old. I'm the chief of the kabardino balkaria Gerontology Society of the Russian Academy of Sciences. Professor Ala Inarokova has been keeping an eye on the health of her older countrymen since the late 1990s. Since then, the Republic Gerontology Center has conducted hundreds of psychological tests. Having a chance to compare people in a gerontology center, we arrived at the conclusion that long-living people are more emotionally stable and more positive. It is psychological. It is about their attitude towards life and possibly, just possibly, some genetic prerequisites. High tolerance to stress, equability of mind and optimism. These are the qualities of most locals who reached the age of 100. And one more constituent regarding their longevity. They are not alone in their old age. Usually, they live in big families, consisting of a few generations, and they feel needed. The families of old people in the caucus take very good care of them. They are treated as something fragile, like a crystal vase. A centenarian from the vicinity of Mount Elbrus is taken care of by six children, 20 grandchildren, and 28 great-grandchildren. Relatives emphasize his clear thinking and interest in the events happening way beyond his own village. His cock is the perfect candidate for a short test. We will do a little test now. You'll have to answer a few questions. When were you born? In 1909, in July. This is one of the first tests in the history of gerontology. A set of ten questions aimed at appraising one's mental abilities was developed by Professor Henry Hawkinson from Great Britain in 1972. One more question. When did the First World War start? The last one? The first one. I can't remember that. Uh -huh. Okay. The First World War? Yes. I can't remember. Of course, he did not answer all the questions, but he did provide answers to such difficult questions as who the current president is with astonishing ease. Can you tell me the name of the president of Russia? Ah, Putin. The last task was the most challenging. He was asked to count down from 20 to 1. And he managed that task perfectly. Not only did he count in his own language, but also in Russian. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14. Iskak Uzdenov completed half of the task successfully. An excellent result for someone born in 1909. An important task of our program is to verify the age of our participants. It turned out to be rather challenging in the North Caucasus. The project expert, Marad Jabermizov, had to immerse himself in the history of the region, making a lot of discoveries along the way. It is remarkable that a lot of the longest living people celebrate their birthday on the same day, in the beginning of July. 
Most of the oldest living people of this region have their birthday on the 1st of July. The thing is that in the time of the Soviet Union, if one did not know their birthday, it was assigned to the middle of the year, that is, the 1st of July. As a result of a thorough investigation, the researcher from Nalchik managed to find out the real age of Iskak Uzdenov. But to start with, we are going to find the oldest citizen of Kabardino, Bukharia. My database has around 200 old people. The oldest one is 108 years old. But there is an old lady in the village who I have never met before. They say she is over 120 years old. Her family calls her Nana, which means grandmother. She raised eight children. Now, she takes care of her great-great-grandchildren. My beauty, my honey, I wish I could be at your wedding. The family considers Nana to be a descendant of centenarians. Nana's father lived to be 114. However, there is no documentary evidence of this. The old lady does not remember the exact date of her birth. <laughs> to be honest, I don't remember. My last name is Shalva. They say I'm 125 years old. The officially registered record of a human longevity is 122 years and 164 days. The only proof of the extreme age of this Caucasian centenarian is her ID. According to this document, Nanu Shaiva was born before the previous century. First of all, there is no exact date of birth in her passport, no day or month specified. It means that nobody, including herself, knows the exact date of her birth. Secondly, the grandmother's youngest daughter was born in the 1960s. So, having done some mathematical calculations, we can say that the grandmother was 70 years old at the time. And finally, she really looks no older than 90. The Russian passport of this woman is the legal successor of the Soviet one. Gerontologists have a theory that in the past, in some countries, one and the same passport was passed from one generation to another. It is likely that people wish to live long and healthy lives created this phenomenon but it's a difficult question and it requires further investigation. It is challenging to define the age of the cabardino bocaria elders. They were born at the start of the last century. Usually they were Muslim. And the mosque did not record the date of birth. The czar was not interested in those details. In the past, before the revolution, dates of birth were not recorded. Age details are only mentioned in family lists of the Nalchik district, the Tersk region, as of 1886 and 1905. But unfortunately, those lists for other areas of our region did not survive. In the past hundred years, the republics of North Caucasus went through a lot. The revolution, civil war, fascist occupation, deportation in the 40s, as a result, the archives are missing data about entire villages. 
We tried to find data about their birth and their families, but unfortunately, we couldn't find any records on our centenarians. The biography of one of our participants prompted the direction for our search. 70 years ago, a citizen of Upper Baksan, Iskak Uzdenov, became a victim of Stalinist purges. The records about him have been kept in the archives of the Ministry of Home Affairs. The result is as follows. We only managed to verify the age of the third longest living person interviewed. The age of the second one does not coincide with the one specified in his passport. He was younger than the date stated in the passport. As a result of the investigation, we found out that Iskak Uzdenov is 10 years younger than the stated age. So he is 95 years old. And according to the classification of the World Health Organization, he is still classified as a centenarian. The old village of Kashkatao is 30 minutes away from Nalchik. The purges of the 1940s involved those villages too. According to the Enkaveda data, the landlady of this house was then 35 years old. I am Misarhan Chichenova. I'm 108 years old. Mr. Khan Bekirovna spent almost 13 years in exile. Since returning home, she has never left Kabardino Bakaria again. Most of her life, she worked as a cook in the local collective farm. She retired in 1968. Is the mincemeat ready? Yes. At the age of 108, Mr. Khan Bakirovna helps her family around the house. Her eldest daughter turned 83 recently. At present, there are 86 living descendants of the centenarian in Russia. There are seven great-great-grandchildren alone. It is thanks to Allah that I live so long. I eat the same food everybody does. Butter, meat, breathe the same air. The oldest villager of Kashkatao looks much younger than her age. The only signs of her age are bad hearing and a slow, measured walk. It is exceptional that a 108-year-old woman still sees very well. She can still sew on a button. Good hand control is a sign of mental alertness. We can test it with a seemingly simple exercise. Mr. Khan Bakirova, we will try to do a little test now. Please try to fold this piece of paper using only one hand. The A4 paper test is one of the standard assignments used with old people. It is used in medicine to appraise fine motor skills and to diagnose the psychological state of a patient. The way the assignment is completed is also important, whether it's fully completed or only partially completed. Whether the mistakes are corrected or left as they are. Based on this, we can make a conclusion on the psychological state of this person, if they feel depressed or apathetic. All this can be deduced based on the results of this test. Thank you very much. You've done very well. Excellent. I don't need much. I've always enjoyed life and been joyful. And I don't want to die. I want to continue living. Healthy centenarians are the subject matter of the research of gerontologists. According to the statistics, 10% of all centenarians have never been sick. Mm -hmm. 
Misr Khan is one of those phenomenal people. Your blood pressure is 130 over 70. This is very good. If only everyone could boast these similar numbers. This fragile woman has never gone to a hospital in her life. Her clinical score is good. The cardiogram does not raise concerns. There are no abnormal deviations. The rhythm is good. I can diagnose a left atrium enlargement, but in general, the cardiogram is perfect. We've been studying the cardiovascular diseases, arterial hypertension and ischemia, their regional distribution, even within the little Carbadino Bacaria. Having divided republics into mountainous regions, foothills and plains, we analyze the geographic distribution of those diseases. In the mountainous region, the situation is much better. The climate most probably, affects the elderly very much, as you know. Also, living high in the mountains, they are more physically fit. For people living in the mountains, physical work is the natural way to exist. When local centenarians were born, everyday physical work was required to survive. The elders of the Caucasus have kept this habit of working hard all their life. There are over 50 ethnic groups in the Caucasus. There are a lot of people living up to an extreme age here, in each group. They have attracted scientists' attention since the time of the Soviet Union. The first large-scale expedition was conducted in 1957. And it was done not in kabardino balkaria but in the neighboring North Ossetia. The Republic of North Ossetia, Alania, is located in the very center of the Russian part of the Caucasus Mountains. Nearly half the territory of the Republic is mountainous. Similarly, with their neighboring Kabardino Balkaria, this Republic has had a cult of longevity from time immemorial. I am Aslan Sutsev, the Dean of the Department of History of the North Ossetia State University. I am 46 years old. A doctor of historical sciences, Aslan has been interested in the history of his land since he was a student. He has gone on a lot of archaeological expeditions all around North Ossetia. And he found evidence of special treatment towards the longest living people in the most surprising locations. Here, Marat is a true monument to Caucasian longevity. It's probably the most peculiar monument in Ossetia, both in terms of the age of this person and the inscription on the uh, gravestone. But of course we understand that a human being cannot live for 167 years. So is it a mythical or a real character? I know his great-grandchild who is turning uh, 90 next year. And he told me that the gravestone was erected in 1913 by the offspring of Gizo Marzaganov. So this person is absolutely real. Although, as far as the inscription is concerned, I am sure it was corrected at some point. You can see it too. This consonant should be followed by another letter. According to the language rules of the pre-revolutionary Russia, and it would have most likely stated the monument and also here under rest. A large stone with a carving is located at the side of a road along a popular route. This is clear proof that longevity is a source of pride for the locals. I knew the grandmother of my wife very well. She recently died. She was 113 years old. According to her passport, she was born in 1895. And even at her 
old age, she was hiding it in a coy, flirtatious manner. When she was over a hundred, her son would tell her sometimes, Nadezhda, you are a century old. She would sulk and reply, no, I'm not a hundred, I'm only seventy. He laughed at that because he was seventy. And he was her first child of her second marriage. According to statistics, there are 93 centenarians in North Ossetia now. Only 30% of them live in cities, the others live in villages. Dana Bichiguova was born in an old mountain village at an altitude of 1,700 meters above sea level. She moved to the foothills in the Eravsky district at a late stage of her life. I am Dana Bichikoyeva. I come from Degors Gorge. I am over a hundred years old. Dana has never had a birth certificate. There is no mention of her in the archives. We managed to determine her age based on the village residential registration. One of the sources which can at least indirectly confirm the date of birth or the approximate age of a citizen is the Rural Household Register, maintained by the local councils, and the information contained in them was frequently updated. The Rural Household Register is a unique source of information about the population, age, education, and personal property of the villagers. Those annual reports the local authorities have been kept in Russia since 1935. Many rural administrations still keep those archives. And the village of Dana is no exception. This is Rural Household Register number one for 1976. What did you say her last name is? Bichikoyeva. Let's see. Okay. Oh. Bichikoyeva Dana. Born 1907, a session. Can read and write. Has she always lived here? No, no. In the 1950s, they moved from Sterdegorsk, the Degorsk Gorge. It is far from here, around 70 kilometers in the mountains. Thank you. Can I write it down? Of course. Life was very difficult, a hungry life. We had a lot of children, and there wasn't enough food. We had to work very hard to survive. We ate berries, various herbs, artichokes. In summer, we went to the plains. There was a field camp there. We worked all summer. And in late autumn, we returned home. We harvested wheat and corn. Like a hundred years ago, the life of the Bichaguya family is all about the household. In traditional Caucasian families, there is a strict division of duties into male and female. A woman is responsible for most of the household chores along with raising her children. I loved to dance and sing. We rarely had a chance to celebrate something, with the exception of weddings. 
In those times, you were always busy, either at work or completing household chores. Not a minute to rest. After retiring, Dana continued to work around the house. She only had more free time at a later stage of her life. Today, Dana's life is about communicating with her family and doing handicrafts. But despite her old age, Dana looks after herself like a true woman. This old lady of over 100 years old takes care of herself like a young woman. She likes to do a manicure and to put on makeup. According to her relatives, she still applies fruit masks to her face. And what's most peculiar, she makes all the women do the same things, to take good care of themselves. Good day. Good day. Do you have bread? How are you? Thank you. Everything is good. On the other side of the Oravsky district, on the border with Kabardino Balkadia, lives another fascinating woman. She was born two months before the start of the First World War. In 2014, Kulimat Katsionova turned 100. I am Julia Mat. I am 100 years old. Julia Mat's husband died in 1973. So for the past 40 years, she has been the head of the Katsionova family. Relatives still listen to her advice. The youth are very good today. Of course, they live differently from us, but times are different too. Our life was easier. It isn't easy for the youth now. Young people get sick very often these days. We were healthier. Probably that's the most important thing in life. The centenarian doesn't only demonstrate perfect health, but also a good example of a positive attitude towards life, which all Caucasian elders are remarkable for. The villagers call her the most cheerful person in the village. Active and life-loving, she straight away agreed to undergo an unusual experiment. Kulimat, we will test your physical coordination now. I will throw a ball to you, and you will have to throw it back. Let's start. Aging is accompanied by the degeneration of all physiological parameters. However, 100-year-old Kulimat proved that even at an extreme age, you can maintain a good reaction and coordination. I never imagined that I would ever play ball with a centenarian. You did very well. Was it challenging? It was easy. Where does the energy and resilience of this phenomenal old lady originate from? She does not hold a longevity secret. The main rule of Kulimat is shared by most of the local longest living people. You have to work and never be lazy. Then you'll be healthy. The old village of Leskin is the final point of our scientific journey around the North Caucasus. Having studied the biography, habits, and psychology of the local age record holders, Murat Jaburmezov is ready to compile his own rating of the Caucasian longevity. Certainly, heredity is an important factor, but you can't choose your parents. That's why, as a first step, you need to move somewhere that is at least 1,000 meters above sea level. Secondly, the care of your family is very important. Feeling needed and loved, all this helps to prolong one's life. Thirdly, one should give preference to local, seasonal foods. And finally, physical activity is indispensable at any age. The Russian scientist formed his own conclusions. Mountain climate, a large family, organic foods, and physical activity. 
Each of those elements contributes to extending one's life. The aim of the next expert in our series is to extend the set of rules for longevity.